Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everyone. Welcome to a uh, Salad Coffee Chat on emerging approaches to managing and collecting tax debt to improve tax payments collect compliance. My name is Gonagata, Public Management Specialist from Asian Development Bank. I serve as a moderator for today's session on the debt management. Uh, we discuss uh, debt issues because uh, we observed that uh, many of our Asia Pacific economies are struggling with high level of uh, uncollectable debt. Also, on the other hand, I think the uh, uh, development of technology uh, providing the opportunity for tax administration to modernize uh, debt management system and boost overall revenue. So given that, uh, we thought that uh, it's interesting to discuss uh, this topic based on our regional experiences and uh, countries' experiences from uh, Malaysia and Japan. To this end, we are inviting three speakers. First speaker is Ms. Annette Chui, IMF Revenue Administration Expert. She has over 30 years of experience as a senior executive in the Australian Taxation Office, where she has she worked across a wide range of revenue administration activities. Annette has worked as a short-term expert with IMF Fiscal Affairs Department for over 10 years and with other development partners, including ADB. She will present regional trends on tax debt management, tax debt management in Asian Pacific region and international good tax practices based on recent uh, ADB's publication, she also said. Hi, Annette. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Would you like to say a few words? Thank you, God. It's very nice to be here. Um, I think uh, you have introduced me quite adequately, um, so I'm happy to leave it at that for now. Thank you. If you would like me to start my presentation, give me the nod. Of the tax debt collection. Ms. Hon joined the Inland Revenue Board of Malaysia in 1999 and has been working for various branches and departments, including collection branch, where she has been involved in debt recovery for many years. Since then, uh, she gained experience in tax recovery from the branches and moved into the headquarter tax collection department in 2021. Uh, Ms. Hong, thanks for joining today. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself or do well here? Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Nagata. Hello, everyone. I'm Ms. Hong from uh, Inland Revenue Board of Malaysia. Nice to meet you all in this uh, Tadai Coffee Chat. Thank you. Uh, third speaker is from National Tax Agency Japan, Mr. Toshihiko Uchiyama, Deputy Director, Collection Division, National Tax Agency of Japan. He joined the Japanese Tax Authority in 1999. Since then, he has worked at a valid level of uh, authorities from local tax offices, a regional tax bureau, and its headquarters uh, in national tax agency. In light of his expertise, he has rich experience in on the areas regarding system development and data utilization. Hi, Mr. Uchiyama. Thanks for joining us today. Would you like to Hi, say words to the board? Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm Toshiko Uchiyama from National Tax Agency of Japan. Thank you for your time today and see you later. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Uchiyama. Ms. Ho and Mr. Uchiyama will share us uh, their country experience with focus on their data management strategies and the adoption of advanced, advanced analytics, artificial intelligence tools, and the digital payment options. After the presentation from the uh, three speakers, we will move on to the QA session. If you have any question, please post them to the chat or whatever you appropriate. So without further ado, uh, let's move on to the presentation from Anet. Uh, floor is yours. Thank you, Guy, and uh, welcome again, everyone, to this presentation. And thanks to um, to that secretariat for arranging it. And also thanks to my colleagues from Malaysia and Japan for providing some practical examples of the sorts of things I'm going to talk about today. So um, firstly, I'm going to start the presentation with a, um, a 
just a bit of an overview of what's happening around the region um, in relation to the trends in debt collection and um, the the approaches that are being adopted. Um, so we we know because of COVID uh, that there's been a lot of pressure in the debt area and a lot of countries around the world have in fact given debt holidays or payment extensions and the like. So most countries developed and developing are facing uh, reasonably high debt inventories at the moment. Uh, having said that, though, um, there were some trends that we were observing before the COVID pandemic hit that suggests that there were some fundamental weaknesses in some areas of debt even prior to the additional pressures that emerged with COVID. Um, be but before I move into focusing on debt, and I know most of you on the line are debt collectors, so you want to talk about debt, but debt sits, as we all know, in a bigger system. And it's important not to lose sight of that. Um, although, in the end, ultimately, if payments are not received, then revenues are not received. And it doesn't matter how much we raise, if we don't get the payment, we don't improve the country's um, financial position and revenue mobilisation. So debt is particularly important, but it doesn't operate on its own. And so I just remind you of the important precursors of having people correctly registered in the system and getting filing in on time, as well as getting reporting accurate so that payments that are identified, debts that are raised, are correctly raised. Um, so we can look at overdue payment, but if we don't get the file in the first place, we also have an overdue payment that is invisible to us. So we shouldn't lose sight of that continuum. Um, so as I said, the trends in the proportion of debt arrears on books in revenue bodies uh, shows some uh, general downward trend in uncollectible debt in recent years, um, but still uh, a good number of revenue bodies still have large amounts of uncollectible debt, despite the downward trends. So the survey, the, the data I'm showing you here comes from an international survey on revenue administration, which is uh, uh, conducted across the world, more than 160 countries provide responses to this survey. And within our region in Asia and the Pacific, we have uh, over 40 countries represented. And you can see from this uh, um, chart, the significance of uncollectible debt in our uh, debt books. And in some countries, it's particularly concerning, um, but a lot of countries, including developed countries in our region, such as Australia, have fairly significant amounts of um, uh, uncollectible debt. So we uh, we need to be concerned about that for a few reasons that we'll talk about later. Uh, now, despite our best efforts, there's always going to be a certain amount of money that can't be paid, can't be recovered. There's just basic things like insolvencies and statutes of limitations that prevent certain debts from being collected. And then there are those that are uneconomical to pursue, uh, but may be collected later should the situation change. Um, the, the ones that we are um, particularly concerned about are the ones that are um, old and, and perhaps high in number that continue to sit inside of our debt books. Uh, what happens when you don't remove debts that are uncollectible from your inventory is that you provide a false picture to the community, to your stakeholders, about the potential for revenue to flow from investing in collecting those debts. So where we have situations like I showed you on the previous chart, um, where uncollectible debt is significant in the debt book, our stakeholders may be misled into thinking that there's potential for us as administrators to bring in revenues quite quickly through just having a drive on collection. Now, if that debt book is largely made up of 
debts that are um, statute barred or because of insolvency or statutes of limitations, or they're all a lot of small debts for taxpayers that we can't find and or can't make payment, then we're not really providing a honest or clear picture to our stakeholders about the position. So it is important that we have appropriate write-off provisions to make sure that our debt inventories are painting a correct picture of uh, the revenue position. We'll talk about that a little more lately, later. Um, so we know that there are risks associated with um, write-off. There are risks of corruption. There are risks of mistakes. There's risk of revenue loss should things be written off inappropriately. So it is appropriate to have controls wrapped around it. But it's also important to make sure that, that the debt book is relatively clean and realistic. So we have business rules, um, both um, automated ones for small debts, uh, but and, and um, more and more people are using more sophisticated analytics-driven ways of detecting uh, within the debt book by profiling the debt book and detecting uh, those potentially uncollectible debts. Some can be automatically written off if they're small and, and clear cut. Others may need to be referred for human intervention, but they are becoming more easily identified within the debt book using various profiling techniques that are uh, available to us nowadays at relatively low cost. Um, it is important, though, that where debts are written off, that there are indicators to enable us to re-raise those debts should the situation allow and, requ and or require it. Um, so let's turn our mind now to the main purpose of our discussion today, which is to look at um, using data and behavioural science techniques and uh, things like predictive modelling to strengthen our approach to debt management and the collection of arrears, and the, particularly and most interestingly, the prevention of arrears. Um, so I'm going to move to the next slide, which illustrates a lot of the points we have here. It's quite a busy slide, and um, I will take you through it um, to just explain what it's about. But the, um, the this slide doesn't represent any particular country's practices, but it does represent some common features of a number of countries' practices, including uh, my colleagues from Malaysia and Japan, but also countries like Singapore and Australia and New Zealand. Um, in preparing this diagram, I reviewed what the practices were across a number of countries in our region and uh, came up with kind of a generic uh, response uh, uh, process that I think represents the general position. So we read this going from left to right. So we have um, a the first two boxes represent analysis that we would do before the debt is even due. Um, so we profile using predictive type modeling techniques um, to try and, and work out whether we think the uh, debt will be paid on time because the taxpayer has a history of self-managing and paying on time, or whether we think that they may pay late and, and might need a bit of a nudge or a, a, a push along before the due date to try and prevent the debt from going into arrears in the first place. Uh, but when the due date passes and the debt has gone into arrears, then we, we, we can be more sophisticated these days in determining what the best actions are to take in relation to debt based on the profiles of the taxpayers concerned. Um, does our predictive analysis suggest that they um, um, are solvent, even though they may be in temporary uh, financial stress, they may be invited to apply for a payment plan? Or if they're, the analysis suggests to us that um, they're inclined to wait until they get their first reminder before they play, pay, um, that we issue an, a demand a bit more quickly um, so that we'll get the money in sooner. Other analysis, though, may indicate that uh, certain taxpayers are inclined to not pay until they get their final notice, a threat of legal action. 
And so what we would look to do in those cases is to advance the higher risk cases and the uh, and medium risk cases more quickly along the process. So in the past, we would have had a, a, a sequential linear process, and now we've got a dynamic one where certain cases will be advanced more quickly into the neck uh, and certain steps will be will be skipped. Um, we have statutory requirements, of course, to provide certain notices, but um, we we within our laws, we can push along the process for those with a history of um, not paying, for example, until they get a telephone call or a visit. We accelerate that and bring it in sooner in the process. Or where we think that they're insolvent and, and our predictive analysis can sometimes tell us that, and that's getting more and more sophisticated, then we need to press ahead quickly so that um, assets are not disposed of and that our um, uh, ability to collect is not compromised. And finally, where there are those ones who don't pay until they are, are really re receive a firm and final notice, we accelerate that. So that's the idea here of the, and, and my colleagues will present some real life examples of this shortly. Um, so I will leave that discussion there for now and we can come back to it after you've heard from my colleagues. Um, but just now to, to wrap up the discussion. Um, so we're here having a TADAT coffee chat. So I thought it'd be a good idea to just remind ourselves of what TADAT, the TADAT framework, field guide says about debt. And there are three key elements for uh, good uh, debt management and arrears management. The first one is to have a sound foundation. The laws um, making appropriate provision for due dates, uh, approved payment methods, uh, ways of calculating the liability and the payments due, interest and penalties um, that can be imposed appropriately according to taxpayer circumstances. Um, collection systems. That Now, what that means is uh, systems that prevent debt, withholding or advanced payment systems, or even just reporting systems so that um, there's sources of uh, uh, information about uh, assets and income flows. And an appropriate legal, frame, legal framework that gives us the right powers that we need when we do have to revert to recovery. Um, and contemporary late payment penalties that are, are fair and uniform across core taxes. And importantly, the ability to grant time payment arrangements in appropriate situations. The second um, to that uh, focus area is on prerequisites. Um, so I talked before about this high levels of on-time filing to enable establishment of amounts owed quickly, um, the requirement for tax clearances in order to deal with government contracts and, and perform other important activities in business, and, and an, an effective arrears management IT subsystem, which provides reliable reporting on the incidence of arrears and generates automatically certain reminders um, and can be flexible enough to do the things I just showed you on the earlier slide of accelerating certain cases in in the and changing the orders of actions. Um, and and that, that this system also provides case management and allocates cases to appropriate officers with the skills needed for the cases concerned. And in some cases these days also makes recommendations to the case officer about the type of action they should consider. And uh, the third element is the uh, debt management administration, clear guidelines and policies and various options for making payment um, to enable taxpayers to choose the path that works best for them, um, enabling extensions of time to pay um, and skilled staff in the debt collection areas who have um, the appropriate experience and background for the cases that are allocated to them. So that means being able to stream cases into specialised areas for uh, varying um, complexity to ensure that the um, 
officers concerned are capable of doing the more complex cases they might receive. And finally, the prompt write-off of uncollectible arrears, which is important not just to clean up the book, but also to make sure that the um, uh, in the cases that are collectible are able to are visible and prioritised appropriately. So thank you for your attention for my short presentation. I'll hand back to uh, Go um, for the next discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Annette. I think your, your presentation clearly highlights the importance of uh, having a clear picture of uncollectable debt with uh, appropriate written of rule. And also, uh, to be more efficient, application of the operating analysis, analysis is very important uh, with a sequential or sometimes dynamics uh, model of the debt collection. And also, thank you for reminding the uh, TADAT uh, modules. Yeah, actually, ADB is uh, very productively uh, promoting the TADAT assessment uh, in Asian Pacific region. And uh, this coffee chat is also a part of the uh, good collaboration with the TADAT secretary and the ADB. Actually, as uh, Annette explained, uh, TADAT, is, uh, TADAT field guide is uh, uh, prepared as an assessment module, but uh, also having a very, very uh, rich information on international good practice in tax administration. So re simply reading the uh, field guide will be very helpful for tax administration. So yeah, with that, uh, I'd like to move on to the next presentation from uh, Ms. Hong. Ms. Hong will share experience in Malaysia. Uh, Ms. Hong, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you, Mr. Nagata. Okay, I hope everyone can see my slides. Good, after, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Miss Hong uh, from Tech Step section of Inland Revenue Board of Malaysia. And actually, I'm very happy today to have this opportunity to share the on uh, IRVN experience in managing and collecting tax debt to improve uh, tax uh, payment compliance. This is the overview of uh, gross tax debt in IRBM with the current debt uh, of uh, Ringgit Malaysia 34.731 billion as of 31st of October 2023. From here, actually, we can see the gross uh, tax debt to net uh, tax collection ratio is uh, reached the highest in the year 2020 and 2021 during the uh, COVID uh, pandemic with the percentage of actually 32.37 and 33.58% respectively. After the, actually the, after the pandemic, uh, we continue our recovery actions and collections uh, where we able to reduce the ratio to 24% in the year 2022. Our mission actually is to reduce the ratio to 50% with more systematic, uh, timely and efficient tax debt uh, collection strategies as uh, it is part of the board's uh, responsibilities. From the right hand side, you can see the analysis of debt. In RBM, which the debt of uh, Ringgit Malaysia 34.371 billion as 31st October is uh, actually divided into three main categories. The first category is uh, debt under the legal action with the highest debt of uh, 23 billion or 67% and followed by the debt under collection action of 10 billion or 30%. And the last category is the uncollectible uh, debt. Uh, of uh, 1 billion or 3%. This is uh, our strategic uh, tax debt management, which uh, we are implementing in RBM. The first is uh, prevention. Actually, the first step is uh, prevention. We are trying to prevent the tax uh, payable to become tax debt, actually, from the beginning. Therefore, we divided our tax uh, debt collection strategies into before and after due date. Before the due date, actually, we were engaged with the taxpayer by giving soft reminders to them where we use email blasts and outbound calls to remind taxpayer to pay before the due date. We conduct this approach in the case of advance payment and current tax raised in the current year. For the advance payment, repetitive emails will be issued 
if the taxpayer default any advance payment in the year. With the soft reminders and repetitive emails, actually we can increase the tax payment compliance and the tax collection as well. For your information, the email blast and the outbound calls are handling by our Hasil Recovery Call Center. Recovery. Actually, the next step is to recovery. If the tax is already uh, overdue and the taxpayer did not make any payment or there is still an outstanding of tax, the collection unit in the states okay, will start collection actions upon the taxpayer. There are three levels of uh, actions to recover the tax debt. The cycle uh, begins actually with the collection action. For debts aging within one to two years, okay, which we have early and continuous engagement with taxpayer. After the two years, we will start our enforcement action. And last, we will write off the debt if all the necessary recovery actions have been taken and the debt is uncollectible due to the circumstances of the taxpayer, such as a pass away, bankruptcy, shred off, or dormant. Okay, actually, the whole cycle it takes about six years to to actually um until the process from the collection to the write off uh process is about six years. Actually, we we uh, determine or we we hope we can settle the debt uh, within the uh, six years. In order to make sure. The strategies can be implemented smoothly. Actually, we, RRVM, we have this, uh, what we call collection toolbox, okay? And the revenue management system and the KPL as well to make sure all our work, tax debt management strategies uh, can be conducted uh, very smoothly. For the following part, I will share our experience, uh, our, no, I will share our collection toolbox and revenue management system function in improving the tax payment compliance. This is uh, the collection toolbox uh, we are using in our VM or in Malaysia. This toolbox actually is divided into four levels of actions, okay? Which level one and level two refer to the actions for collection. Wait, uh, sorry. Okay, there are four levels. Uh, in the uh, four levels of action, which level one and level two re refer to the actions for a uh, collection. Level three is uh, for enforcement action, and level four is uh, for right of activity in the life cycle of tax debt management. This toolbox actually just uh, provides a guidance to our officer of each and every actions can be taken in recovery of tax debt from level one to level four. In level one, we normally issue email blasts, reminder, let, reminder letters, and conduct outbound calls. This actually uh, will be doing automatically by the HQ, our HQ, uh, HQ, and collaboration with the Hasil Recovery Call Center due to the large numbers of taxpayers. In level two, actually, the case is conducted by the tax collection officers in the state. In this level, the officer will do case study and determine the most appropriate and available collection action. There are various actions uh, in this level, okay, such as uh, we can conduct a premise visit, we can caveat the property, we can appoint of an agent or third party, we can uh, do the travel restriction and notification of civil proceedings. Actually, these actions are very specific and, and need to spend more time and effort. The officer need to study case by case with all the information from internal and external resources. Their working experience, knowledge, negotiation skill, judgment and decision are the key success factors to collect the tax debt. Actually, in RBM, we conduct most of our debt collection actions or activities or strategies in level one and level two. Okay, due to the debt aging is less than two years and the potential to collect is higher. From the statistic, which we can show that the debt reduction under actions taken in level one and level two is almost 90% compared to the 4% from the enforcement action and 6% from the uh, debt are written off. Out of the 90% uh, debt reduction, 56% is from the tax payment, 34% is from the reduced or revised assessment, and 10% is from the installment plan. Okay. 
this is the reason why actually we focus Edge collection actions in level one and level two to aim for tax payment and increase our tax payment compliance. This is because the potential of collection is higher in level one and level two, and the complexity of action is lower compared to level three and level four. The officer will continue to actually conduct the enforcement action in level three, especially for delegant taxpayers. This actually is conducting by the legal unit in the states. With this uh, collection toolbox, actually the case officer will able to know actually where where are we, okay, what are the actions that have been taken and actually what is the next uh, next action uh, okay, to handle with the with the case or with the debt. I'll continue with the RAMs. This is our in our revenue management system or debt management system which we are having in RBM. Actually, we are using a revenue management system. It's a debt management system which using advanced analytics and it is actually integrated with other internal tax system. It is real time to ensure fast efficient and accurate collection actions with the highest uh, collection in return in RAMs, okay? The process begins with uh, cementation of debt by age of debt, amount of debt, and status of the debt. The cementation of debt is relating to the collection actions in collection toolbox. From the cementation, the officer can actually focus deeper, okay, through the search key of filtering characteristics such as uh, they can fill by state, they can uh, sorting by locality, they can sort by file type, they can by text type, by range of depth, segmentation of depth, MBA or any other or depth amount. Okay, All the collection actions uh, taken by the officer will be recorded and the list of past actions taken will be displayed in the ranks. From there, the officer actually were able to know and determine or to decide what is the next uh, best action according to the tool collection toolbox. For example, if the record shows that the previous action was issued a reminding letter, so the officer will not issue the letter again. He or she will proceed with the next action like make a call to the taxpayers and deal for payment or installment plan. In RAMs, actually, the progress of actions for every case of debt can be monitored, starting from the date the case is assigned. The collection officer will be able to know how many cases have been assigned, completed, pending for actions, and cases not done yet. With that, report for every level of, of actions can be generated from RAMs to review the performance and reevaluate the, the debt collection strategies. Okay, moving forward and challenges. Moving forward, actually, RBM plans uh, to use the advanced analytics to predict, to predict actually behaviors of tax payment by the taxpayer so that we can match the collection action with the behaviors or in behavior insights of the taxpayer. This actually will increase the success rate of debt collection, increase tax payment and improve tax payment and compliance and reduce the tax debt. We actually will also um, develop uh, customer segmentation for debt collection using ability, ability to pay and likelihood to pay. We actually plan to do nudging starting next year with the issuance of notification based on the customer segmentation, which the content of each notification will be different or varied based on the segmentation of taxpayer by its behavior, actually, especially in the tax payment compliance. Actually, one of the challenges we are facing la, is actually the tax under the legal action. As I mentioned in the world overview of tax debt before this, 60% of your debt is under the legal action. The actions under legal is very comprehensive and the potential to collect is very low. With the huge amount of debt under this legal action, actually we are facing challenges dealing with debt under bankruptcy, under appeals and debts under uh, suspended by the law. We are actually trying to fasten the process of civil proceedings to ensure actions are taken in a timely manner. Okay, it is not easy uh, in the debt collection, 
But actually, we are always trying our best to do the best to recover all the government's debts. Debt. With that, I think I end my presentation and thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I I your presentation is very clearly mentioning about your uh basically yes uh I say simple and uh, clear your uh debt strategy and it was it was supported by a very comprehensive and staged approach of the uh, collection toolbox and you also highlighted the importance of the uh, uh data data data, uh, data for for taking that the state approach uh, by by gathering the comprehensive integrated uh, having a integrated database uh yeah and you also uh, mentioned about uh, application of the advanced analysis and probably I have a question but uh, maybe I would like I'd like to first uh, over, uh, move on to the next presentation from uh Japan Japan's colleague so Mr Mr Uchiyama, uh floor is yours hi thank you Mr Nagata I'm Toshiko Uchiyama from National Tax Agency of Japan. <clears throat> Let's start. Uh, <clears throat> with next slide, please. Uh, first, I would like to explain the general trend of tax delinquency in Japan. The graph indicates the amount of delinquent tax outstanding of national tax. Uh, you can see that the amount of tax debt outstanding reached a approximately 2.8 trillion yen at the end of 1998 fiscal year. In order to respond to this situation, various measures have implemented to prevent delinquencies and promote voluntary payments. As a result, these works, uh, as a series of these works, the tax payment call center was established in 2002. As a result of these activities, compared to the peak in fiscal 1998, the amount of genuine tax outstanding in fiscal year 2022 has decreased to about 30% of the amount of fiscal year 1998. I stop here about the overview of the trend of the genuine tax in Japan. But I I think uh, we think that national tax agency needs to continuously make best efforts uh, to prevent delinquencies and promote tax payment. Next, I would like to explain flow of tax collection of national taxes and outline of tax payment center. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> if payment cannot be confirmed after the payment deadline has passed, a demand letter will be sent. This demand letter will be a condition for a subsequent seizure process. Uh, the tax payment reminder will be implemented uh, with a central focus on tax payment call center to confirm delinquent taxpayers' intention to pay and encourage voluntary payment. For the tax collection, we think that it is uh, effective to contact delinquent taxpayers as early and repeatedly as possible. So many cases in new delinquent tax cases are handled at the call center. If the intention to pay can be confirmed for reminder at the call center, we get delinquent taxpayers to pay their taxes in full by monitoring the performance of installment payments, for example, after listening to the payment plan. On the other hand, for cases for which contact cannot be made by phone or in writing or cases that may make it difficult to continue business due to disaster, disease, or payment at once, uh, contact is made at a uh, tax office. Uh, when the intention for payment is recognized after fully listening to individual circumstances of delinquent taxpayers, tax relief measures such as the de deformment of uh, tax payment will be taken. 
with the intention is not recognized. The procedure for collection of tax delinquencies, such as seizure uh, of property and public auction, will be implemented. Next slide, please. Thank you. A call center is established by region nationwide. Phone reminders are efficient, efficiently performed, focusing on new delinquent tax cases, utilizing the systems. The call center has been functioned very well, as shown in the slide. Next, I would like to explain the activity utilizing AI tools. Next slide, please. This is uh, about our AI call list that has been in operation at the call center since July 2022. Uh, <clears throat> as a background of introduction of AI at the call center, calls to delinquent taxpayer had been made on the date and time that is considered optimal based on the experience of staff and the results of manual analysis by staff. However, uh, the response rate had been decreased due to reasons such as a certain number of people not responding. Thus, uh, it was thought that there was room to make the office operations more efficient by improving the response rate. Based on such a background, we have constructed a model that predicts the day of the week and time when delinquent taxpayers are likely to answer the phone, utilizing the data such as information of delinquent taxpayers and the past call history and AI. And we are conducting a calling activity based on this predictive model of response. The figure below shows an image of the AI call list. Uh, if day of the week and time when the drinking taxpayer A is likely to respond is Monday at 4 p.m. As shown in the red, for example, a call is made from a call center to drinking taxpayer A Monday at 4 p.m. based on the call list. As a result of implementing this activity for one year, the response rate when using AI prediction is 31%, as shown in the square on the table shown in the lower light. Uh, this is higher than the result without using AI, 21%. This uh, would be evaluated as a good result. Uh, next, I would like to explain the AI project to be introduced in the future. <clears throat> Show this slide. Okay. Uh, the picture of the project is shown below. With this AI uh, predictive model is con uh, constructed based on various information of drinking taxpayers and the most likely way to contact each uh, drinking taxpayer is scored and predicted. We think we have two usages. The, uh, the, uh, the first usage, as explained in the second slide, new drinking tax cases are handled by the call center at the very beginning. However, it's inefficient to understand the cases determine that contact cannot be made by phone or in writing at the call center. Thus, with this usage, it's understood not at the call center, but at the tax office. As shown in the center speech bubble, or for drinking taxpayers A and B, a phone reminder or document letter has a higher score and is considered more efficient compared field examination. So these two drinking taxpayers shall be under the call center. Uh, on the other hand, for the drinking taxpayers C, 
is the field examination has a higher score. So this delinquent taxpayer shall be under the tax office. And the usage is shown in the right speech bubble. A tax office comprehensively considers suggested score and individual circumstance of delinquency case to select a mean of contact from field examination from the remainder and the letters. In this operation year, we would like to try this usage once. Uh, finally, uh, I'd like to explain the broad and comprehensive delinquency strategy uh, we call uh, future vision of tax administration. Next slide, please. Okay. As shown at the top of this slide, the data uh, is a uh, uh, source of wisdom, value, and comp uh, competitiveness, and is positioned as a trump card to solve social issues of developed country which has new problems, Japan. Also in tax administration, we believe that it's important to work on BBO as well while improving efficiency and sophistication of office work by utilizing the data. For this reason, National Tax Agency will push ahead with three activities as shown in the figure below. The first activity is utilization of AI and data analysis. Uh, like I explained today with the uh, predictive model. The second activity is utilization of online tools. One of the tools is the remote consultation with the web conference system. Another activity is the receipt of data of accounting documents through a secure system. It's obviously more convenient for taxpayers to submit documents by data. And the same is to tax collection works as well in light of the efficient process and analysis of the information. The third activity is digitalization of inquiries to related organizations. Currently, the national and local governments are co collaborating on data such as tax returns and uh, coordinating with relevant departments to expand the scope of linked information. In addition, uh, we will strive to expand and strengthen utilization, collaboration, and cooperation of data that can be obtained uh, through exchange of information with foreign tax authorities. Uh, we believe that we can promote efficiency and sophistication of collection work by promoting activities shown above. We'd like to conclude my talk. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think it's very. I, I think I. I think it's very impressive to see that the uh, uh, National Tax Agency Japan has already a uh, concrete outcome of the use of AI, which is uh, one of the uh, key topic of this session, uh, with uh, use of the call list. And uh, you also try to expand in the use of AI for for how to approach the uh, taxpayers. So, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. So uh, now uh, I'd like to uh, move on to the uh, QA sessions. And uh, me, uh, while waiting the QA uh, question from the floor, I'd like to ask a, a couple of the follow-up questions to the, each presenter. So maybe we, I will take reverse sequence. And I have a follow-up question to Mr. Uchiyama. So for the last slide and 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 last two slides, I think you are you are also uh, working on in new initiative like for the. Uh, use of AI for how to approach taxpayers and and how and enrich the data collection uh, to to use uh, that data for the uh, data management. So in doing such a new initiatives, are you facing any like challenges or I mean problem issues? And you have some lesson learned from how to address your challenges. If you could share such experience, uh, that would be helpful to to the 
to the participant. Yeah, thank you. Over to you. Uh, I'm sorry to speak uh, Japanese. Uh, <coughs> eh, 例えばあの、AI コールリストに関する課題として、えー、特定の曜日、時間帯への予測が集中しすぎると、その時間帯にオペレーターがこの全ての対象者へではできないので、えーまあ、ターゲットを絞る工夫が必要となるっていうのが課題です。Well, one of the examples in challenges that I、uh, will be facing in using the AI call list is, for example, there could be a lot of people are available to be called upon on a certain hours of certain days. But it's impossible for the, the operators to call the all the possible、uh, available time zone, available time、uh, for the delinquent person. So, therefore, there will be such challenges exist、uh, because if there will be too much concentration of the available hours and days、uh, in the same day. So, that would be the one of the challenges that we'll be facing in trying to use the AI call list. Ah, Mata. あの今後ですねあの、また今後、永続的にこの良好な成果を上げ続けるっていうことが難しいので、まあ、成果が出なくなったときは、予測モデルのこのチューニングを行う必要があります。And also,、uh, we need to fine tune the predictive model、uh, continuously because、uh, it was okay to successful, however, in the future. Uh, then it's possible that the, it may not be able to predict as much as it used to do. So, in order to continue to be successful,、uh, we need to continue to、uh, continuously fine tune the predictive model itself. That is another challenge. That's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Uchiyama. Uh, then, uh, I, I may ask,、uh, I'd like to ask a question、uh, to Mr.、Uh, Ms. Hon. So, you mentioned about the last slide about、uh, advanced analytics to predict behaviors, behavior insights, and matching with appropriate collection approaches, action niche strategies. So, I think this is also the, today's,、uh, key, one of the key, today's key topics. So, Would you elaborate、uh, how you utilize those approaches in, in, in your data collection? And、uh, like, as, as,、uh, like, like I asked to the Mr. Uchema, if you are facing any challenges,、uh, that will be helpful to share the participant. Yeah, over to you. Okay, thank you. Actually,、um, to, 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 con, to overcome this,、uh, actually, we are moving forward.、Like, okay, I was with the initiative. Actually, we are moving forward. The main challenge,、like, okay, we can foresee is a part of、uh, data analytics, where actually we need to run a series of data to determine the taxpayer behavior and come up with a compliance model. From there only, actually, we can decide what are the suitable、uh, collection actions. And measure the result of the actions. Because, this is because the behavior of the taxpayer actually、uh, may change, okay,、uh, and the action must be changed as well. Okay, we cannot use the same approach to all the taxpayers because the impact will not be the same. Okay, we want to make sure actually our, our action now is actually is rich to the taxpayer. Rich here means、uh, the taxpayer will react. Okay, or respond to our collection actions and they come forward to us to negotiate, to negotiate、like、for payment or installment plan. For example, for a, next, for a new taxpayer,、like, okay, the approach、uh, is more uh, to uh, giving soft、uh, reminders or correct information to make sure they comply to the tax、uh, payment. For the delinquent taxpayers, actually, the approach is、uh, more firm and rigid. Okay, because they're actually in comply from the beginning. Actually, we、uh, welcome also a, a tax administration,、uh, other tax administration to share with us actually the experience and the knowledge in developing the tax payment、uh, compliance model associated with behaviors and risks. This is,、uh, this is the main challenge like, actually we are having, we are facing, we can foresee that、like, we will be facing in RBM to implement、uh, those initiatives. Thank you, Ms. Nagata. That's all from my side. Thank you very much,、uh, Ms. Hong.、Uh, thank, so, thank you for sharing your experience so, so far. And 
Probably then uh, maybe uh, while waiting the question, uh, I'd like to uh, ask Anet to 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 follow up questions. So you you highlighted that uh, the some of the uh, uh, many of the some uh, Asian and Pacific economies are, st are still struggling with a uh, high level of uh, uncorrected debt collection. So and you mentioned also uh, that uh, it's very important to have a clear picture of the uh, uh, debt. So. But uh, in in this regard, uh, do you have a uh, do you, are you are you aware of any benchmark that is alerting the economies to to that your country is actually a high level of debt, like like maybe some rate or rate or any any uh, figures that 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 can use for benchmark for countries to decide whether they are having a problem or they are doing um uh, uh, relatively nice. So yeah. Yeah, thanks, Guy. Look, there is no universal benchmark on what are acceptable levels of uh, debt or uncollectible debt on the books. Um, but I think that that when you're looking at going above 30 or 40 percent of your um your debt book being in arrears, then there is probably some cause for concern. Um the slide that I showed in my presentation focused on the proportion of uncollectible debt in the debt book, which um, really just takes away the ability of management to make decisions about whether debt collection is functioning effectively. And my experience in working with countries uh, across the region and in other regions as well is that um, the uncollectible debt situation is quite often very large proportion of it is uh, never going to be collected. So, um, you know, the taxpayer has passed away or the company is insolvent or the statute bar has already been passed. Um, that th That is a real serious issue of inadequate write-off procedures. Our colleague from Malaysia mentioned the importance of write-off at the end. No, you, it is very important to make sure that write-off is strictly controlled and that there are divisions of decision-making and delegated powers are um, restricted to relatively senior people for larger amounts. But if there's one thing that you can do outside of the sorts of things we've just talked about to try to manage your debt better, it is to make your debt inventory cleaner so that management can see what is the real situation. And, Colleagues have talked about aged debt and the likelihood of collection diminishing rapidly after the first year and then after two years being seriously compromised. When you have a debt book that is full of very old debt, it is very easy to lose sight of the ones that are most likely to be collectible, that is the newer debts. So I really encourage people to have a good look at their write-off procedures and to make sure they keep their debt book clean. Um, I, I can't give a benchmark because, it, I mean, I, I look at the graph from before, even countries like Australia have quite big debt books. Um, so, but their their age of debt is not so great. So there, there's a tendency in some countries to pay late, but not to never pay at all. And so there's a, um, a turnover of the book. So you can have 30 or 40% of your debt not paid on time, but if it's paid within six months, it's not as a big issue as if it's not paid within six years. So you really have to look at it country by country. Thanks Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, your, your message is clear. So, and my next question to you is uh, you also uh mentioned about the importance of keeping a connectivity uh among the taxpayers uh tax administration administration's key operations meaning like a filing and corrections and those needs to be kind of like uh operated integrated so uh i think uh that that is clear but uh, how how tax administration uh can approach to achieve that uh outcome yeah. yes i think that it, it is because most of us are, to a large extent, functionally structured, um, so we tend to um, arrange our organisation based on the core functions of taxpayer service and 
and registration and filing and, and um, enforcement and audit and collections. We do tend to look at the, the um, activity that we're working in, the function that we are involved in in isolation. Um, and it, it, as an organisation, though, at the executive level, um, they need to be just as concerned about late filing as they are about late payment. You could actually say that a taxpayer who has paid late is more compliant than one who has filed late because at least their, their debt is in the system and you know about it. So it's the things you can't see there. The failure to file and therefore not crystallise a debt is invisible. So, uh, But it's still a debt. You just don't know about it. So there is, it is really important to have a look at the whole of the system end to end from time to time and not just focus only on the function that we are responsible for. As debt collectors, of course, we look at our debt book. That's our um, responsibility. It's our assignment. But if uh, at a management level, we need to be looking across the taxpayers. So there's... there's uh, a role there for segmentation to have, be having a look at each key taxpayer group and see how they look from end to end across the compliance continuum. Uh, occasionally, we have to lift up sites as managers and executives to look at the whole system um, for, but then breaking it down in different ways through different windows, like large business or high net wealth individuals or um, uh, small and micro businesses occasionally just looking at a slice across the functions, not just down the functions. Thanks, God. Thanks, Alex. So while waiting, yeah, we got a, a question from the floor. I will just, uh, it's in the chat box, but uh, I will read out it the floor. Uh, this is a, a question to the uh, Ms. Hong, whether the debt collection methods include property seizure like bank accounts? So that's a question for you, Ms. Hong. How about you? Okay, wait. Uh, pardon? Um, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. oh, my God, my God. Hello, pardon? Uh, Ms. Nagata, can you repeat the question? I, I cannot hear. Uh, yes. Uh, the question, the is, uh, hmm? question is uh, whether the debt collection methods include property seizure like bank accounts. Oh, oh yes, yeah. yes. Okay, in in um uh, in the in the recovery action, actually we also uh we also seize the taxpayers' uh, property. Not to uh if let's say prior to uh we have a uh, recovery action in, in order to recovery back the debt. Actually, we also caveat the taxpayers' asset. Okay, it means that uh. Is a is a is a is a so that in advance we can get the asset actually actually taxpayer cannot sell the asset to other party okay before they sell the asset they have to come to us and make the payment or arrange for the payment and then they can sell we can release the caveat okay and then they okay they after that they can only sell to other party uh, this is the action actually we are very uh effect is a is a very uh effective action actually because with the but. Before that, we need to search for the title of the property. We want to make sure actually um, uh, the property is belong to the taxpayer. Even though uh, they want to sell to bank, they want to, uh, they want to sell to bank, they also need to uh, get a clearance from us to release the caveat. Okay, this is actually what we are doing uh, if for the taxpayer uh, who has uh, this uh, property. Actually, we we most of the cases uh we we caveat on the uh, like a building like a land. It's actually a uh, most of that is a land or uh, it's a land uh, actually uh, uh, uh register under the taxpayers or the uh taxpayers name. Mm. Thank you, thank you, Miss Hon. So mm. uh yeah, I think I think you clearly answered the question. So uh yeah and. Um, so we now waiting the question from our, from floor, but uh, like probably if uh each panelist has a questions questions like comments to other presentation, I mean yeah we can we can discuss among the panelists. So yeah. any comments for other presentation from Alex? yeah. 
Uh, actually, uh, Miss Anit, I have a, uh, I have uh, actually, I'm, I'm very uh, interested in your topic of uh to keep our debt book uh, clean. Okay, actually, we we because um in our debt profile, actually debt profile, we have uh you have um many debt actually which is overdue for a long long time. Like if in our record we have a uh, tax uh, more debt uh, more than uh six years is considered very old already. That's why in our procedure we, we plan to see okay the most is a uh, six years. After six years, actually we have a clear uh, right of right of policy to clear the debt. Actually, to clear the debt. Is only for a bookkeeping. Actually, we are still tracing the taxpayer. Uh, we are still our uh, recovery action is uh, going on to trace the taxpayer. Even though the book is clean already, the book is actually zero already. The debt is no debt because we are uh, implementing the right of uh, uh, policy. Okay, to clear the the, the book lah or the debt or the taxpayer. But actually, we also conduct uh recovery uh, uh, against the taxpayer okay but actually uh, from your uh from your uh, as op your opinion uh, actually how long actually is uh, considered uh, uh is a uh, debt is considered um, not all or or very uh, uh what is called is um reasonable uh, accepted uh life law of the of the debt Actually, how long actually we can we can actually uh must stop that from continue uh, to become the debt uh because the older the debt is actually is very hard to collect okay lay? that's why we have a right of policy actually what is the reasonable uh debt aging lah okay from your opinion or from your experience actually we can uh, consider uh in our uh debt recovery this is what actually I'm interested in thank yeah, you yeah so. Yeah, so I, you um, your presentation highlighted that window at the front end, that first two years being really important, and I think everyone would agree with that. And there are studies that show that um, there's a rapid decline in the collectability of debt after the first year. So in looking at your risk profiling, one of the things that most bodies will do is have a high priority for new debt, uh, particularly new large debt. Um, so there's, as you go after the first year, within two or three years, your chances of collecting the debt are already down to less than 30%. Um, so your practice of saying, let's take them out at six years is, is a realistic approach. And that at that point, you have limited chance of ever getting that money. But there are a number of organisations that do what you're talking about, which is to have a complex recovery area or a complex tracing area where even though you write the debt off, unless you are statute barred, some countries have a statute bar, uh, others don't. Um, if you're statute barred, well, that's it, it's over. But if you're not statute barred, particularly where the debts are big, it is appropriate to have a small team of people uh, whether it, either tracing the taxpayer or looking at complex legal recovery options that may be able to be taken, like, for example, assets hidden offshore, all those sorts of things, where you have very delinquent taxpayers. You may write that debt off, but that doesn't mean you would abandon it. Sometimes you'll continue to try to find avenues for collection, and if you find them, you re-raise it. Other times, if it's a small debt, you will only re-raise it if the taxpayer becomes active again. Um, so as soon as they start to do something, file a return or something, they'll pop the debt will be re-raised. But these are all contextual and based on your local legal framework. Because if you have a statute bar, well, then you're done. But you've also got issues of um, insolvency. If a taxpayer is bankrupt or a company is insolvent, there's only a period of time where you can keep trying to get that uh, money out of the um, liquidator. And then when the liquidation is closed, you have to write it off because it's not collectible. Mm -hmm. um, it's not legally collectible. Um, and, there, and, of course, there are situations where the taxpayer passes away and the estate doesn't have anything. So there, there mm -hmm. are points at which it's clear you should write it off sooner than six years uh, if there's a bankruptcy or a liquidation or a death or whatever. But um, the, the more important side of that, I think, is uh, recognizing that new debt is your opportunity, so put most of your resources into new debt. New debt. Uh, yeah, yeah, which is I know what most people do. 
Yeah, Miss Annette, actually in our policy, a write off policy for those taxpayers already uh, passed away or the company already uh, dissolved, already uh, bankruptcy, actually we have no time limit. We can straight away write it off. Uh, for those yeah. uh, circumstances, we are for those uh, inactive or we cannot be traced. We need to wait for another six years because actually we are trying to recover back the debt. Okay, another question maybe I I would like to uh to 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 ask opinion from Miss Enid about the handling with a small amount of debt, small amount of debt. Actually, we have in our in our debt uh, profiling segmentation, we have a a a, a, a quite of not. Uh, the, the numbers is very big, okay? With the taxpayer with amount of a uh, very small amount of debt. Actually, how do we handle it? Like, like, uh, like in our ringgit Malaysia, is about less than 25 ringgit, okay? We predict as uh, below less below uh, 25 ringgit, we consider it as a, a small amount of debt. Actually, we have uh, like 400 or 1,000 of these taxpayers. Actually, we doing, currently, we are doing email blasts. We are just a uh, very soft, uh, very uh, uh, because the amount is whatever for the small amount, like we just, but some of them also didn't pay. That's why we are wondering actually how is the practice of other other authorities, other uh, tax administration in handling with this a uh, small amount of uh that uh, tax debt. Mm. Can I have some yeah. ideas uh, on how to handle this uh, this this debt? Yes, um, I I lost you for a minute there, um, and I hope I got all of the question. Um, there there's a couple of common practices in relation to small amounts. There's mm. uh, de minimis rules are often set where um, amounts under say fifty dollars uh, mm. will. We'll just, uh, after the automated approaches that you've talked about, like email blasts and, and SMS messages and the like, then mm. those amounts are just uh, written off automatically because they're small. Um, that so and, and most jurisdictions face the dilemma you're facing, lots of really little amounts. Sometimes they are um, uh, just a fragment that's left over from a payment plan and the taxpayers forgot to pay. Other times it's just a small assessment. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and if the taxpayer is still active, um, that, then those things will pop up again the next time there is something filed and they just kept being added and eventually it's worthwhile actioning. But it is appropriate to have a de minimis rule and not to action cases that are with human intervention. You can automate your actions, but to waste your time on those ones is not worth it. So I think that your approach is quite quite illustrative mm. and, and common uh, in, in a number of jurisdictions that I have worked in. Yes, yes, Miss Annie. For this small amount of debt, actually, we are automation. We are automatically send the uh, email blast. Actually, we send a few hundred thousand at the beginning of the year so that they can just pay off the, the, the small amount of debt. Like you said just now, actually, for next week, next year, we hope there is a, another amount to top it out and then the amount can be bigger and we can do any other uh, recovery actions. Yeah, yeah okay. that's right. Eventually, it will become worth your while. Um, mm. So thank you for that. It was an interesting discussion. Go. Do, do you have any uh, questions from the chat? Uh, yes. Uh, before moving, uh, actually, I I have like, a couple of questions from Florida. And before moving to that, totally, it's interesting to hear from Japanese colleague that uh, uh, if you have any practice in addressing the small amount of debt. Eto, Japan de wa. あの、先ほどご説明したように、まずはこ、納税コールセンターという部署が対応しています。So in Japan as I explained earlier, the we have the uh tax payment call center we have and they would address those small amount issues. コールセンターではえ、自動的に電話をこう納税者につないだり so we try to arrange and manage the delinquency uh, of the tax debt uh, by using the system in the call center to call automatically to the taxpayer 
or the uh, automatically issue the document so that we can send it by mail. その結果、おおむね8割程度の滞納者をノゼコールセンターで処理することが。As a result of those、uh, using the system, using such a system, about probably approximately 80% of the、uh, tax delinquency now can be processed and collected、uh, by the actions of the call center. Thank you, Mr. Chema. Yeah, I think,、ah, sorry, you're in the middle. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, yeah, it's quite a、uh, call center, it's quite effective to even address a small, small amount of debts. So then、uh, I'd like to move back to the question from f l o r、uh, I received the, just、uh, for a、uh, follow-up、uh, follow question to the Ms. Hong,、uh, asking, Uh, Malaysia, uh, so this is just kind of like a cl clarification. You,、uh, Malaysia already using the behavioral, behavior ana analytics, or you still consider、uh, adapting the measures? So if you already using, maybe would you share some example?、Yeah. If possible, yeah. Actually,、um, in Malaysia, we are actually、uh, predict, uh, actually, we, before this,、uh, we can predict actually the behavior of taxpayer using our RAMS、uh, system in RAMS, and can, we can predict the behavior of taxpayer, and then we will actually determine the next、uh, best action the officer is a suggestion、uh, of next best action the officer uh, can uh, do the recovery action. But prior to that, actually, we are actually enhancing、uh, the behavior. Behavior insights, so that、um, actually in the coming next year, actually, we are in the midst of doing this、um, like modeling or prediction, is a more deeper insights of the taxpayer, so that actually we can expand our, our, our recovery actions to the right, actually, to the right、uh, behavior of the taxpayer. Actually, we want to、uh, research deeper. And the, currently, we, have, we do have、uh, behavior、uh, studies analytics of the Taxpayers' behavior, and then we transform in the、uh, next NBA, next best action uh to help actually as a guidance la, to our offices to, to actually proceed with the following、uh, best action to recover the debt. We do have actually, but we want to expand more、uh, in the coming years.、Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you very much for the explanation. Yeah. So, and we have a two questions for the floor, but、uh, I think we, the one is a, uh, uh Uh, how, how do we,、uh, when do we consider a taxpayer debt as a foregone debt? And, and the second question is,、uh, how do we clean,、uh, clean our debt book? So I think somehow,、uh, those are already explained, but,、uh, if maybe starting from Anit, if you have something to add. Yeah, so, the first and most important thing when we're talking about write off and、uh, is to have some approved policies in relation to what is a foregone debt. How do we determine that a debt is collectible? How do, in, uncollectible? How is it defined? And the definitions need to be articulated very clearly in an organizational policy that is、uh, followed by staff who are involved in. Working on、um, preparing write off submissions, or in、um, the case where there are certain automated write off actions, those need to be included in the policy as well. And the th sorts of things that you would be looking at including in a policy to define a debt that is、uh, uncollectible include starting from the legal provisions. Do you have a statute of limitations?、Um, what happens when a taxpayer dies? Uh, certain debts are forgiven on death, others are collectible from estates.、Um, how, what is the size of the debt? How much investment is necessary in collection before you can say you will write it off? If the debt is 25 ringgit, then the investment should be quite small. But if the debt is 250,000 ringgit or dollars or whatever currency you're using, then clearly the extent of collection action expected before write off is higher.、Uh, but then you will look at things like are there, is the taxpayer untraceable? 
are there any assets that can be identified and secured? Um, is the taxpayer um, potentially hiding assets offshore? Is there are there assets that may be able to be um, retrieved with a legal investment in recovery? And is that investment worth it? Um, so the definitions are quite complex, but there are a number of um, uh, references that you can find that will give you some ideas. The OECD has published some uh, on what what how you might define a uncollectible debt um, in different situations. And then the next step is how who is authorised to approve the write off of that debt. And again, that has to be variable depending on the size and uh, the the importance of the debt. Um, and the nature of the reason why it's uncollectible. If it's statute barred, then it, it, it you have no choice but to write it off. Uh, even though a lot of agencies don't really, you have you cannot collect it, so you should be writing it off. Um, so the the answer to your question is quite complex, and I think that um, it's a topic for another webinar, perhaps. Um, Guy, let's let the others have a chance to talk about it. Uh, I've had hold the floor a little. Yeah, thank you, Alan. No, thank you very much for leading the discussion on this. Ms. Holm, uh, Mr. Gemma, uh, do you want to say something on these questions? Yeah. Uh, okay, let me uh, uh, let me say something about this right, right off then. Actually, in uh, Malaysia, in RBM, we have a very clear policy on, uh, on right off. Okay, like just Miss Annie said just now, actually untraceable is one of the reasons actually we also consider to write off. If, if because the tax pay is untraceable for more than six years, actually how you are going to trace. So and then live with no property, with no asset, with nothing, then we are we actually suggest or we put in our policy to write it off. That's why we actually have a very clear uh, write off policy in RBM. Actually, because we have a few of categories of uh, written off, uh, categories of written off, and then actually we put in our revenue management system, we segmentize them according to the criteria. Uh, actually, then from there, the, the, the officer already know, actually, from the beginning, at the end of the year, actually, from the total debt, actually, how many cases and how much the debt should be write off. Uh, we already uh, assign the case into our system. We already segmentized the segmentize is very at the end early of the year. These are the cases you need to write it off. Because we already determined for you, okay? Then because because of the uh, of the categories uh in our written in our policy, we can write it off and then we will pull the data, we will we will everything put it in the segmentation and then you we already put it for you in your inbox and then you have to clear clear the case. That's why we are actually uh in Malaysia in our RBM, we are actually um very uh, to make sure our debt book is very clean. We don't want actually the debt is more than six years. Uh, that's why we maintain, like Anna said just now, uh, the, 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 the potential to collect after two or three years is very low. Uh, it actually, the potential, we should put more resources on the uh, on the new debt, beginning one, uh, starting from one to two years. More than two years, actually, is the, it's very hard to collect already. That's why, how about more than six years? Uh, but also, in our debt segmentation, we also actually... Um, Put the, the the age of the debt lah, okay, age of the debt, so that we actually can focus on new debt, on old debt, and middle old, middle new, <laughs> that kind of age. Uh, we have that that of that kind of segmentation, uh, in the profiling of our debt, um, at the beginning of the year, so that we can actually focus. We know already actually next year we plan already actually the next year what are the strategies we are going to implement to recover the debt or to make sure that the, the debt is clean. Okay, and then that is uh, is, is uh, what uh, we implement in RBM. It's a little comment. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, do you want to say something? Ano, Nihon dewa, eh, Taino Shobun no Teshio Surusai ni, eh, Yokin ga arimasu. There's, there are requirements when we will stop the uh, delinquency uh, processing. あの、その要件とは1つがあの、滞納処分のをすることによって、その納税者の生活を 
を著しく窮迫させる恐れがあるときです。もう一つが、納税者の所在とか、あと、滞納処分を執行することができる財産が不明なときです。最後の条件というのが、対応処分を執行する、まあえー、財産であったりとか、あと、徴収共助の要請による徴収をすることができる財産がないときです。And also,、uh, if they don't have any asset, the last requirement is that, that the, if the delinquent taxpayer has no asset at all, or where the delinquent、uh, processing is possible, nor、uh, if there's no, have no assets where the,、uh, the collective assistance of the、uh, this assist, assistance in tax,、uh, tax collection. Uh, is not possible due to the no, not, not having the assets by the tax, delinquent taxpayer. 日本ではこの3つの要件を判断材料として個々の納税者の実情に応じてその法を適用していくということになります。So, so in Japan, it is Case by case, that we will make a judgment in considering the situation that the delinquent taxpayer is in, and then we'll make the appropriate decision whether we would actually execute the tax collection or not. Hey. Well,、uh, thank you. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Ujima. I think it's very interesting to see that、uh, how, how、uh, two countries are taking different approaches. Like... Yeah, Ms. Hong is、uh, basically in Malaysia,、uh, age is very important, but、uh, in Japan, uh, uh, put more focus on like case by case, 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 by case approaches in, in Vietnam. Okay, I think we are now running up,、uh, up, running up the time. So I'd like to close the QA session and、uh, the coffee chat as well. So if any of your panelists h a s、uh, some few words in, in, in the last. Okay, then.、Uh, I think,、uh, thank you, thank you for,、uh, thank you, Annette, for leading the discussion, sharing many experiences, and I miss Hong and Hong for, for sharing Malaysian experience. I think, I think that, and Mr. Jema, it was very impressive to see that、uh, how NTA utilizes、uh, AI in data collection. I think today's discussion is uh, 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 focusing on、uh, written off,、uh, which is, Not, not right there yet, t o the topic, topic, but、uh, as Annette mentioned in, at the beginning, it's very important issues. So I'm glad to have uh, uh, some uh, experience uh, sharing uh, in this issue. So, and last but not least, I'd like to thank for、uh, Jacqueline, Jacqueline and uh, Jacqueline and uh, Adal from the Tata Secretariat.、Uh, they are based in Washington, D.C., so maybe it's, it's, it's very early morning, but still they are supporting our. Coffee chat. I appreciate that. And thanks, thanks,、uh, but not least, thanks for participants to join in this session and uh, uh, giving us、uh, many questions to e n r i c h the discussion. So, with that, I would like to conclude the、uh, Tadat Coffee Chat. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.